is Viviana Guzman, and I'm here with the Flute View team. And today's guest, we have the the current leaders of the Gemeinhart <laughs> Gemeinhart team, and we will be uh, just talking with you. I just really don't know if I'm actually live on Facebook right now or not. I have the spinning wheel, so I guess we'll just assume that we. Are okay. We are okay. Okay, cool. Because I just have this Facebook here online. Oh, okay, good. Because um, I just have the spinning wheel. So, David and Jennifer, welcome. Uh, it's so nice to have you, you here today. And I wanted my my question to you is when I, I know all of a sudden you guys leapt out into the scene and all of a sudden gave this new beautiful look to Gemeinhart. When was it that you first took over the position here uh, as the leaders of the Gemeinhart team? Well, that uh, it, it really kind of started in uh, right at the end of 2009, beginning of 2010. But we were, we were still controlled a little bit by the uh, previous investment owners. And so that took about another two years. I would say it was right about 2012 when we fully, we started changing the company then, but we fully started moving forward about 2012. Nice, nice. And the latest thing that you're doing is the Galway Crusader head joint. Uh, so now I, I started with a Gemeinhardt flute, and now I think the point is that we can stay with the Gemeinhardt flutes, right? <laughs> so Jennifer, tell us about that and how that came about. Yeah, so um, interestingly enough, um, what started it was Lady Jeannie Galway hit like on a couple of my posts on Facebook and made a couple comments um about shows we were at and um i remember the day we were at the florida music educator convention and we were sitting with kelly ryerson and i just about popped out of my chair i said look at this you know lady jeannie is commenting and she seemed very interested and she was noticing you know that the mind heart was coming back on the scene and and she said her first flute was like a mind heart and we started chatting so at that point, they said that um, with their first flip program that they have, their video series, a lot of people were asking them what their opinion was, like what flips they recommended for students or, you know, amateur adults who aren't, you know, interested in spending a lot of uh, money on an instrument, but they want something good. And they started searching um, for companies that they felt they could recommend. And so they met with us at the Chicago NFA convention a number of years ago, came to the booth, tried the flutes, and hung out at the booth for quite a long time. And at that point, that's how that relationship started. And we um, started to uh, help them get the first flute program out to our music educator uh, retail uh, store to get to the band directors and the students. So that's how that started. And then Sir James started picking Dave's brain about head joints. <laughs> now he can talk about the head. Yeah, and he actually, uh, he started talking about head joints and uh, we wanted to know how, you know, he said, I understand you don't play. And I said, no, I don't. He said, well, where does the passion come from? And I said, well, you know, I've worked at my nurse since I was 18 years old, you know, started in a factory. And so at that point he says, uh, oh, I get it. So, so you come from the manufacturing side. And I said, yeah. So we went on and then finally he said, well, let me ask you something. He goes, would you be interested in making a head joint? And at first I said, no. I said, because, you know, we were restructuring the company and, you know, there was so much to be done you know, to get the product right and get where we knew it should be. And, you know, with all due respect, an artist of his level, you know, to make a head joint for him, you know, it could take many, many of ours, you know, trying to design that. And, you know, we didn't per se have a, what I call a true head joint designer, you know, like a, uh, a LaFen or a Dana Sheridan, someone like that, that really goes into the, you know, as a player, you tell them what you want and they design it. And at that point then, Sir James basically said, well, I think I have a head joint we could do a little work to, and, you know, it would be a, come up with a prototype we approve and, you know, go with that. He said, I really think it would be something for the market. 
And of course, at that point, I always say I let my mouth overload my rear. And I said at that point, well, you know, if we have a proof sample, I can make anything. And that's kind of where it started. So, and, uh, and actually, it's, it's been so exciting from the time we got the thing first done. You know, we've never, in my 36 years at this company, I've never seen anything that I put out in front of people that they play and it pops like that. And it, it's not just getting dealers to buy it, it's players buying it, you know? And so it's been quite exciting, really. Yeah, it's really yeah. beautiful because I tried it uh, in, when we went to Switzerland last summer and I just, I really loved it. So you have this whole beautiful uh, world of flutes. I was on your website today and I was just so, uh, uh, impressed and excited about all the different lines of flute and you know what what is your vision for the company because I, I there are so many flutes I could recommend a flute to any level of player in my studio and um, for myself and for the little teensy kids all the way up to professionals. And all of that other stuff that you have going out there. So I, I'm feeling a vision, but I'd just be so interested to hear you articulate it for our listeners. Well, you know, I think that we realize that in today's market, you know, it starts off from you know the basic being that you have to have an you know affordable, high quality you know instrument for the student to start on, and then from there you know, you go up in the different levels. And I think that through our years of being here and investment people in the company, we always knew the right way to make a flute and how it should be done, but they would never let you. You had so many hours to put into it and that was it. Mm. And what happened is we started restructuring the company. The first thing we wanted right was we wanted the product right. Because, you know, I was here running the factory, you know, we were producing, you know, 50,000 units a year. And that was just go fast. That's all it was. Don't take, don't waste any time. You go fast. You don't go fast. You get reprimanded for it. And so we wanted to go out into the market and, you know, have integrity with our product. We wanted to say what it is, stand behind it and believe in it. And the, the need to have maintain our skilled labor here in Elkhart, you know, we wanted to make sure we did that. And we started that early on before any of the big pushes out there or any of the American made stuff started back, you know, we were doing that. Back in 2012, Jennifer and I were trying to figure out ways to bring more labor back into this factory. Because, you know, musical instruments, but definitely a flute is never, I've yet to see one designed on the computer and then manufactured. What I've always seen is you take a flute, you craft it, you make it, and once the players say, this is what we need, then you figure out how to replicate that. And so, you know, you need that skilled labor to do that. And... So that's where we really set out after that. And then with things like our Roy Seaman Piccolo line, you know, working hands on with Roy Seaman, you, know, you get working on it and you think, you know, we're going to make this right. You know, we're going to get this to the level that it should be. We're going to make it to the specifications he wanted. And I think that it, so, so really, I guess it comes back to every level of instrument you see out there. We look at to the level that that we try to make the best we can. How do we get that the best for the market? And, uh, that's really, you know, I would say our overall focus and our, our vision is to really show that, you know, Gemeinhardt not only makes student flutes, we can make the high quality, you know, higher end flutes and, you know, be a full spectrum there. Yeah, we, re we really have um, the majority of people who work here at Gemeinhardt have been here from for 15 to 35 years and they're highly skilled flute makers. And of course, all of our piccolos are made here in Elkhart um, from beginning to end. And um, people are still surprised, we still have to continue to reiterate the fact that even our entry-level student flute, the QSP, there is a lot of um, manual labor and components that we actually, for, they start here in Indiana and Elkhart and in, in the United States. And then our partner company, um, Jesse Assembling, we bring it back here, we test it. All of our head joints, all of our flute head joints are made here, um, from the student flute on up to the goal length head joint. So we like to reiterate that, and, and we are um, working harder to offer more US-based flutes at a higher 
you know, more of a handmade step up to a professional instrument because we have the people, the skilled people to do it. So we're very really excited about that. And Elkhart has been hit very hard and you may have noticed in the news, but we actually, I'm not going to look at here, but we just had the president in Elkhart last week. And that's actually the fourth time a president yeah. or a presidential candidate has been here because Elkhart was one of the most in the entire country when it came to manufacturing all the year. We used to be the band capital of the world. And, and we were hit very hard. And my heart was one of them. And you know, we're continuing to, to rebuild the company and add more American jobs back. So we're, we're very excited. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really incredible that, that you did that uh, and are still and are doing that in, in, in places. Right ahead of Sorry. Oh. Yeah, I was just going to say I had the privilege of getting how everything is manufactured, and it's it's a great factory. I, it, it's always so kind of overwhelming to actually see what everyone's doing in there, and um, you know, I had another question about um, an alto flute. I played the Ali Ryerson. Uh, new black alto, which I thought was amazing. Um, tell us a little about that one. <laughs> well, that that started. We were we were looking to finish. You know, we liked the color of it, the coating that we put on, and uh, you know, it was truly changing. Well, honestly, I was looking at it from the coloring, wondering how much it really changed it. And Allie was in working with it, and we we're looking to make a few modifications on a silver alto. And we were showing her that one we were working on. And it kind of started once Ali started playing it. She was, oh, wow. Oh, wow. She just, she stopped after the first note, she dropped her, dropped her jaw. After the first note, she was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it has a lot of projection. It's a beautiful thing. You know, and she played a lot of out there. <laughs> so that's very helpful. Yeah. So, and it's a lower cost metal. Oh. You know, so it's really affordable for people. And it has a nice projection. What we really try to do, you know, my predecessors and different people around the company, they would always try to tell the market why they would do something or, or how they're going to do it. And our approach is different. You know, we have this team of artists that we say they're family. They really are because we rely on them so much. I talk to them daily, every one of them. And it's like, I, that's just something I don't think will ever pass off. I was just talking with Peter Seymour this morning, texted with him, and it just, you know, but we listen to him, we talk to him, and, you know, it's it's like even Fluter, if she'd have been here and she had said, this plays like this or this, you know, she could have said, this other play right, if she, when she left, you can bet we would have been looking at that. You know, okay, well, how do we address that? How do we make this, you know, because that's the important part, you know, and so I, I think that that's, uh, that's key, just like with Alto, when we got started with that, you know, listen to Allie and, you know, see what final tweaks we could do to it, so... Well, and I, I tried the Crusader head joint also in Vecchis when we were there in Switzerland. And I'm curious about uh, like how much say did uh, Sir James have in it or what is, I don't know, I, I was blown away by it, first of all. And I congratulate you and the team and everybody for it because it's really a magnificent head joint. Um, how, did he like say, oh, shave off a little here or how did that happen that you came up with such a masterpiece? That's basically the way it started. He took a head joint. And he says, "I think we do this, this, and this to it." And it was a, it was a head joint that he had used, and we made a few changes to it. Now, mind you, now think about how nervous we are tweaking his head joint. You know, and yes. And then once uh, once he said yes, this is what we go with. Then we use um, technology that really we haven't used here before, and that was we sent this out to get. I'm mean, going to simplify it almost like a laser MRI type imaging to uh you know copy this thing exactly oh. and uh so i mean it was truly to his specs i mean totally uh it wasn't something that we made and gave to him and said here try this you know it was his recommendations his his specs to do it and uh so it's really highly based off of him you know the the, the specs that he told us to make it to and once we did that imaging then we maintain it to that and uh we really bled heads around here on some of this stuff, you know, as far as the quality goes and you know, getting it right, you know, and uh, making sure it's right. So 
there's a key part to the, I think that head joint is that making sure everyone plays the same, you know, to be able to produce it, have it play the same. And so. Yeah, I remember the, the first time we were with Sir James and he played the head joint, he just, you know, he let out that Sir James Galway laugh and was just, he was really tickled. He's like, yep, that's the way it's, but that's the way head joint's supposed to play. Yeah. <laughs> just so happy and of course, you know, we were yeah. sweating bullets, you know, <laughs> hoping that it was, you know, um, what he wanted, what he was looking for. And, and it is, it's amazing. I mean, it's so even and it's just so effortless to play in, in you know, the entire range of the flute with a nice, full, beautiful sound. And it's, it's just a, uh, it's a dream come true. I mean, I can't, I can't, I never imagined in a million years I, as a flute player, be working side by side with James Galway. Yeah. You know, what <laughs> you know what intrigued me about it is that, you know, through the years, I think of all the greats I've got to work with, and, you know, whether it's the George Credulouses, some of the names that people don't know that well, but they knew the whole technical side, you know, we sat with them and it would just intrigue me listening to them. I remember Richard Hahn, me talking about Albert Cooper. And then when I sit down with Sir James that first night and we start talking, he starts talking about Albert Cooper, some of the people he's worked with. And, you know, I was just so intrigued because where do you get that information when those people are gone? And where do you get that kind of knowledge? And, you know, so it was really, really inspiring to work with him and, you know, go through that. And then once, like I say, once it started popping out there, we've, you know, I, I shouldn't throw numbers, but, we, we sold four times that model flute that we put that head joint with than we did the year before. And it's just amazing. It's what so well, I joke and say, and I'm really, I'm not joking. I said, Sir James told me to put the head joint where the foot joint goes, I would do it. <laughs> you know, so. that's, that's really beautiful. And you know what, Jennifer, can you tell us how you became part of My Heart Flute? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, so I'm a flute player, but I think, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, I come from a musical family, um, but uh, when I was, I was about 12 years old, I had been playing my flute in church a lot, and a gentleman who uh, was a vice president at the time of Armstrong came, went to our church, oh. and I was still playing on my close soul student flute. And one day after church, he came up to me and handed me a flute. He said, you need an open hole, <laughs> a good flute that you can play on. And he said, because one day, you know, you can make a difference in the music world. And he wasn't talking about, and at the time I didn't realize it, but he wasn't talking about as a flute player because he came from manufacturing side, you know, the industry. And so my dad kind of reminded me of that. Um, one time. So it was written in the stars years ago, but um, I started out at DePaul as a flute performance major. And during my first year, I realized that wasn't the right fit for me. And I ended up moving back to Elkhart and started a family, but my band director uh, in high school knew I was back in town and said that they were looking for a flute tester at United Musical Instruments. And that was in 1994. So I learned how to test flutes. And then in 97, I came to Gemein Heart and as a supervisor in the factory and part of quality control and testing, I started uh, supervising different departments throughout the company, started going to some NFA conventions, working in the marketing side a little bit. Um, but then some things happened and changed through the years. And uh, I ended up working at a couple other flute manufacturers. And uh, I actually started my own repair business for a while, too. The flute refinery is what it was. <laughs> and I had a workshop in my house and, um, you know, I did repairs. So, but anyway, I kept my relationship with my heart. And 10 years ago, I came back and um, did what I knew how to do best. I worked on the research and development side and the quality control and then to through the company, uh, director of marketing, and uh, on up to my current position as the vice president of the company and a co-owner of the minor. That is a, an incredible story. Both of you 
have such incredible stories and someone really needs to write a book about you too because <laughs> both of you because of what it means in you know in the United States to really come through a company and, and have vision and make it you know uh, what it is today and I just think it's really inspiring to everyone out there who wants to start a company there are so many different ways and routes and I really appreciate uh, what, what you're saying today. And, uh, and in your opinion um, what do you think sets Gemeinhardt apart from the other brands that are out there now? Oh wow, that's that's an easy one. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it really it really is because of the fact that I think I think the difference is that from the top, you know, we've been on the floor working it, making it from the very beginning. We understand that side of it. Uh, Jennifer being a player, she understands that side of it. Um, I think from the knowledge standpoint, the way we listen to the market, I don't think there's another company that's as well rounded as we are from the food side of it, you know, uh, we do have a few other products out there too, but from that side of it, I don't think there's another company that's around with that. And because of our history, I mean, we care about it and we will drive our financial guy nuts because, you know, quality's not there. We're not worrying about numbers, you know, and I just think it's different the way we approach it. And, uh, you know, we want, we do want to, we believe in combined art, we believe in the product and, you know, we want to, make sure that our customers are happy and we do everything we can to work with that. You know, nightly you can find me sometimes on a food forum talking to someone and saying, well, send it in and let us look at it, you know? And so and I think that's the side. I really do. You know, is that whole approach and the knowledge base, you know, it's just different. Yeah. The passion. Yeah. Is, uh, so it's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's, my brother's really personal to us. Um, it's very personal and it's not just business, it's not just a job and it never has been. So yeah, I think that is, but, and we get our feelings here pretty easily when we hear somebody say something bad about my heart. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we also understand there were some years that we were both working here when there were some things that happened that was out of our control and, you know, it was unfortunate and it did hurt us. It, it hurt us greatly. But, uh, and like we all know, it takes a lot longer to <laughs> clean up a reputation than it does to ruin one. And so we really, right when David became president, we got on the road. We went to shows, we went to meet with our dealers, we went to meet with the fluted. We had some amazing artists who had been a part of the Gemstone group, who were artists for different brands at the time, stick with us. Uh, and Greg, I mean, he's been here from the beginning. We, you know, these people are really amazing that they've been willing to put their reputations on the line and believe in us, you know, and, and stick with it. And that's why we say they really are family. They really are, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. I love hearing your story. And um, yeah, and I've, I've watched how Greg has been with you and just you know, uh, he's always there at the booth at, booth at NFA, you know, <laughs> drawing in the crowds and whatnot. I, I think that's wonderful. Um, usually you'll see, usually you'll see too, like when you see the NFA and places like that, what you'll see is that, you know, it, it's what we do. We're with our artists, you know, when they're doing performances, we get, we want to get there. We want to see it. We enjoy it. You know, if you look at the broad range that we have, you know, it's, uh, it's quite a mix, but yet we, we do have a relationship and really enjoy them. So, you know, you try to, you know, support them and all they do too. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, as we start wrapping up our session here on, on Facebook, um, what kind of advice would you have for a young uh, flutist who's just starting off and doesn't have a flute, doesn't know what to do, but has this vague little dream of maybe being a flutist someday? <laughs> <sighs> I mean, okay, so I can tell you, the minute you talk about the beginning, I mean, I remember the day I got my flu. And I remember getting it on the case and not wanting to put it away. And just having that feeling. And I spent the entire summer trying to figure out how to play it on my own. I didn't have a teacher in the beginning, you know, and 
Um, and we didn't have the internet. <laughs> there was no, you know, there wasn't any videos to watch to see how to play it or put it together or anything. But by the end of the summer, boy, I was ready. I was ready for band. And it's just, if you know you want to play the flute, you know, get, get a plan and play it every day. And Sir James says that too. He says he never stops playing. He never stops playing. It's just walking down the street, you know, he's always got his flute. And um, just have that excitement about it as much as you can. And uh, I know it's difficult because then there's the boy, now I got to practice, right? <laughs> but I think that excitement, if we really love to play, you know, just to get past that and just enjoy, just enjoy your instrument. It is a dedication, though. You know, they decide to do it. They've got to, you know, really commit to it, be dedicated to it. And uh, I think that that's, that's really the key to, you know, practice, keep playing. And, uh, and like I say, really have that commitment. <clears throat> really have that, you know, discipline to say every day I'm going to do this. And, uh, you know, and, you know, of course, pick a good product and, you know, the best they can and go from there, you know. And, uh, and they, will, they will succeed. Yes. Well, I, my first flute was a Gemeinhart. heart. So. <laughs> yeah. And maybe it's, yeah, I think we all started on a Gemeinhart, heart. And I think, uh, I think it's about time to bring Gemeinhart heart back <laughs> into our lives. Right. Yeah, I, I loved my first, first Gemeinhart heart, open hall, silver Gemeinhart, heart, which was sadly stolen on the streets of New York city. Many oh years ago. Oh my gosh. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> well, Fluter, do you have one last question for them? Well, yeah, for those of us who want to try some Gemeinhardt flutes, like the Ali Ryerson Alto, the Crusader Head Joint, the Roy Seaman Piccolos, where can we find you guys coming up? I know there are a lot of shows and classes. Um, where can we find Gemeinhardt? Well, the obviously will be uh, with some of the Texas show coming up. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, NFA will be there. Um, we'll be in Switzerland again. again. Oh. There's, uh, I know there's several weekend store events that we'll be at, you know, uh, different product at. And then, of course, uh, uh, pretty much all the food specialty shops, you know. And, you know, people can always contact us. We have a great customer service department and we can, you know, they can uh, ask their questions. We can connect them with, um, you know, a retailer in their area that's an authorized mind heart dealer. They can ask us all the questions they would like. We send things through our dealers all the time for uh, consignment and trials. You know, if it's not something that the store typically carries, you know, in the store, but, you know, we, we uh, make sure we do everything we can, you know, to, uh, to accommodate. Um, the musician. So. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us this, this morning. Morning in my case, I'm in California. <laughs> <laughs> right. but, uh, we've been speaking with the Gemeinhart Heart team, Jennifer and David. Thank you so much. And for the Flute View team, I'm Bibiana signing off. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Good day. Bye. Bye-bye.